good. Miss Dow here. Um, I'm really kind of enjoying some of the some of the aspects of being online. Um, I'm a lifelong learner and I'm really kind of enjoying learning about all of these different tools uh, to help me better communicate with students and with you, the families. Um, something that I really missed being in the art room because in the art room, first of all, I have one of the best art rooms in Durham Public Schools. So not complaining about that at all. But as you know, I'm in the back of the school. Uh, so I miss seeing a lot of you when you come into the office. Um, <clears throat> so I don't have those opportunities to kind of bump into you and chat with you. So, um, so now that we're all kind of a little bit more accustomed to using some of these online tools, I thought I should start taking advantage of that and communicate a little bit more with you. And I hope that you'll also communicate with me as some of you already have. So today I'd like to kind of give you a program overview. Um, there's a lot of different uh, perspectives on the purpose of the arts and I'm not gonna go into all of that today. Um, maybe another time I can go into some of those things, but I did wanna at least let you know, um, kind of give you an overview of how do I build the art program? Like what exactly are we doing in art and um, what are the students learning and why? So, I am, I've created a, um, sorry, I'm trying to do things at once here. Um, I've created PowerPoint and some other uh, videos that will help uh, explain um, how I do that, okay? <clears throat> so I am gonna quickly go over a little bit of art programming. I'm gonna show you a little bit of the structure of Canvas so that hopefully, since we are online to the end of the year, um, this will make it a little bit easier for you to kind of navigate and be able to check on what your students doing or to help them when they need help. And then finally, I'll just going to quickly touch on some grading um, and some uploading of work. So our programming um, is based on the elements and principles of design. Okay, these are the, the core, so to speak, or the spine of an art program. Everything that I teach the students comes back to these concepts. Um, so you will see in the beginning of each of the lessons um, or wherever I post the um, essential questions or the, um, the standards, you're going to see some of these words. Uh, and basically, these are kind of like the building blocks of art. We combine these in different ways with purpose, with intentionality, to create certain effects that we are, are learning or striving for in our artwork, okay? So those are one of the things that I'm teaching kids. So when we, you know, even on Wellness Wednesdays, we spend a lot of time talking about color, you know, and how we associate colors, uh, even subconsciously with certain emotions. Um, that's an oversimplified example, but, you know, we do this with a, with a purpose. The third, fourth, and fifth graders right now are working with creating 3D uh, drawing. And so they're seeing how we can change our lines and our colors, um, our value. Uh, so right here, you have your lines. Um, which I, just, I hit them by that menu. Uh, we have color uh, and value. Uh, and just intentionally manipulating those to create a certain effect, okay? All right, in addition, to the um, elements and principles of design, we have our North Carolina Department of Public Education Essential Standards. Um, and there's quite a few. I have my little cheat sheet here. You can, I, I retyped it um, so that it's a little bit more user-friendly for me. Uh, and uh, <laughs> I use this religiously, okay? Um, there's a lot of ver verbiage in there that's very helpful. So you can see this, I put a little example in here. If you can see it, it says there's some verbs that are in bold, identify, identify, use, use. Um, these are all use. Uh, and then you, you see there's some words that are underlined that are added. So each standard kind of grows and gets added to each year from kindergarten all the way to fifth grade. So each standard is kind of along the same things. Um, throughout those year, the, the six the six years are with me, but we build on it each year. So in kindergarten, they're learning to identify, but by the time they're in fifth grade, they're using 
um, and describing and they've taken it into other areas. Regardless, there are those three areas, visual literacy, contextual relevancy, and critical response. And I try very hard to build each lesson to, com to include all three of those. Uh, visual literacy is exactly what it sounds like. Visual literacy is learning to read your environment or a picture um, <clears throat> using art vocabulary and making meaning from it. Contextual relevancy is part of that. It's, it's um, cultural clues. It's understanding emotion and how you connect to that. It also could be connecting to other text. It could be connecting to other art. Um, it could be connecting to other people. It could be connecting to yourself, um, but it could also be global. So the arts are really, really important in learning um, how to maneuver throughout the world, how to learn. The reason I became an art teacher is because visual art is my learning language, okay? It's my learning language. I like to move, um, but I also work through color. It's how I connect. And then critical response is exactly that. You're learning to um, not just make random judgments, but learning how to say, not just that I like that or I don't like that, but why? And being able to say and express uh, in an intelligent manner, why, okay? The other part of this is um, a comprehensive arts education. In North Carolina, we are a leading state in the United States uh, to do this. A lot of other states look to us as an example, actually. Um, arts education is the main area where I am. This is what I'm responsible for. But we all work together to create this arts integration and arts exposure. And that involves being exposed to, um, you know, current artists, or that could also be like performing arts and dance. Um, that integration would be classroom teachers bringing art into the classroom, which I know at least a few teachers do at Lakewood. Um, so together it makes a comprehensive program. All right, so the big question you're probably like, that is a lot of information and it is. So how do I bring it together in a manner that is meaningful to students? And I do that through the five-step studio process. We ask questions, we explore, um, which might, you might think of some practice. Um, we fail and we try again um, because most learning, believe it or not, happens through failure. Okay, I really would like to see us get used to that word fail. Um, not that that is the end, but that it's a, it is a means to learning. Okay, it's, it's not necessarily a bad word um, because we find solutions and we learn from it and we grow. Uh, so we plan and practice, we start to create we make changes, okay? Are we accomplishing our goals? Um, do we need to make some changes? Uh, do I wanna add more? Uh, we add some finishing details and then we share and reflect and that's where we critique. All right, Canvas structure. Um, how is our class set up? Now I've kind of evolved this over the year because DPS gave us a framework that we had to use. And honestly, there's a lot in it that um, was redundant and I think it was very confusing. So I think we are now in third quarter. I think I have set it up and kind of gotten rid of some of the stuff I think that was kind of confusing and I'm trying to make it a little bit re more user-friendly. But in a nutshell, there are modules, okay? We will have four modules for the year, one for each quarter. So right now we are in third quarter, we are in module three. There are lessons. Um, there could be a ver several lessons. There could be anywhere from like three, four lessons to eight lessons in that module. Within each lesson, there is one processing activity. This processing activity is where I'm checking for their understanding, as well as the students should be checking for their own understanding. So it's kind of like practice, but it's not like something you scribble, scrabble, and throw together in two minutes. Okay? You have to show whether or not you understood. And then there's the final project. So we only have one final project for each quarter. That's the one that we will spend um, at least three class periods doing in class. Um, but they may need to find a little time outside of class depending on their speed of work. 
okay? And this is where we bring all the little lessons together in one project. So real quick, um, let me show you. Um, I'm actually gonna go into Canvas. Oh, I gotta minimize this. Nope, nope, that's not what I wanted. Exit, oh, right there in front of my face. <laughs> All right, so I am in, um, got to laugh at yourself, y'all. It's just, it's just one of those things. Um, and this is second grade. When you first come into the art class, no matter what grade, you're going to have my Zoom link, the time of the class, and the day. You also have the clubs and their times, okay? If I'm ever not available, um, this is a link right here uh, where they would go to see Ms. Daniel. All right, so virtual art show is here. You just click on this image and it takes you there. And that little emoji is supposed to be over here. Hmm. All right, um, one of the things I'm gonna go over is grading. If you click on this emoji, um, it is gonna take you to a video I created where I actually share my screen and show you how to find the camera on your Chromebook so that students can take pictures of their work. Um, Right, so they can just hold it up like this. They can take a picture. And then I also show them how to upload it to Canvas. Now, I really think that after watching this video and maybe practicing once or twice with supervision, I would say most students at Lakewood can do this on their own, okay? Definitely second grade up. Um, kindergarten, first grade will depend on how much experience they have. Um, anyways, here's our modules. All right, we are in module three right now. So I'll just come into module three. On this page, you'll see those standards that we're covering. There's our essential questions with some of our words. What is pattern, contrast? Those are our elements and principles of design. And then you'll see the lessons. All right, so right now we happen to be in lesson two. So I'll come in here. And within the lesson, again, I'm showing you specifically what our focus is for our standard. I have a video. I am pre-recording all of the instruction so that if a child misses art or they need to see it again, or you just don't understand what they're trying to describe to you, you can come in here, click on the drawing, and it will take you to YouTube where I have the recorded lesson. All right, and then underneath, you have the processing activity. So when you click here, it's going to take you into the processing activity where I have added still frames, pictures, uh, and written direction. Um, not super detailed because you have it in the video, but just enough to kind of be able to follow it and give you a good sense of, of how to, to take you through that. Okay. Now, um, the last thing that I want to touch on was grading. I do not grade based on skill, okay? Art is like many, many other things. Creativity is based on experience. So if your child um, has had multiple uh, opportunities at home to be able to draw at home or just, you know, cut anything where they're using the fine motor skills, they're going to be a little bit more advanced in art than a child who has not practiced. It really has nothing to do at that point, at this point in elementary school with being a talent. It could be, but I don't like calling it that because you could have situations where a child has a lot of skill, you know, kind of lose interest a little bit and then not work as much. And then you have a child who maybe wasn't interested very much, but then was and practiced a lot and by the time they're both in fifth grade, they're equally skilled, okay? So um, it really comes down to uh, what they demonstrated in the concept. Now, believe it or not, they can display the concepts that are being taught without necessarily having advanced skills, okay? So um, if you're in the art room, you would see a sign in my class that says, Ms. Dow's goal is to help students become creative, confident thinkers, because that's ultimately what it makes an artist. No matter what you do, no matter what job you go into, 
you need that creative problem solving and critical thinking. And that is the core of what I teach. So in last, in closing, um, how can you help? All right, these are just some things I was thinking about that could really be helpful. Um, number one, first and foremost, please make sure your student is attending art class. I'm going to be honest, a lot of kids are not. And then some kids are coming and they don't have um, materials, um, either their notebook that Lego gave them to draw in or a whiteboard. Um, sometimes we can do a whiteboard, sometimes we really need paper. If it is an issue, please contact me, okay? I will try to find a way to get you some paper. Um, I can't do it for all 400 students, but I can certainly try my best. Um, I am gonna work on trying to put together some little packets of materials for the rest of the school year. Uh, more to come on that later. Um, also with your students, uh, <laughs> don't ask them. They show you the work, don't be like, what's that? Um, you may feel like you wanna do that once in a while because you're not sure. Um, or you may see something and be absolutely sure you know what it is and you're like, oh, I love that little pink piggy. And then they're like, that's not a pig, that's a cow. And you're like, oh, so safe bet. <laughs> oh, I love the way you use the blue. Can you tell me more about your picture? Okay, and get them to tell you the story. Get them to see the connections between um, what they drew their emotions, their stories, um, their experiences, all right? Ask them, oh, typo, I gotta fix that. Ask them to teach you about what they've learned in art because when you repeat it and you try to teach someone else, you deepen your learning. Or go to the visual thinking strategies page in, our, uh, in Canvas and use those questions when you're talking to them about art, when you see it in a book, or out and about, maybe you see a mural out in Durham. We've got a lot of new murals. And then you could ask things like, how do you think the artist made that? What do you think the artist was feeling? And then ultimately just encourage them to practice, okay? So thank you so much for listening. I know this video probably ended up being a little bit longer, um, but I really appreciate your help. I really, um, I, I'm a huge advocate for the arts and for helping kids learn and be creative. So um, help me help you and your children. Thanks everybody. Have a great day.